Good evening, my name is Jesus Sanchez and I'm from Campus Ministry. My name is Alex and I'm from Campus Ministry. My name is David, I'm from Campus Ministry. My name is Jordan and I'm an MCU student, confirmation student. During this pandemic, Campus Ministry would like to um, help in being a beacon of hope by having a faith discussion once a week during these discussions, we hope to cover a range of different topics concerning faith and mental well-being. And of course, above all, have a time to pray with all of you and for you and all your needs during these difficult and stressful times. These faith discussions will be held once a week and uploaded here on the Campus Ministry page on the MCU website on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Next week, we will have a live discussion as to allow any of you who would like to join us to participate in the discussion. Or even to, if you have an answer or a question concerning the topic that we're discussing. Without further ado, let us begin. The topic for this week is going to be faith amidst hard times. I know during this pandemic and with everything that is going on and being quarantined and things happening in life, um, people have recommended to, to hold on to their faith as a, as a source of hope and strength to continue during these times. So David, I wanted to ask you and also Alex on your opinions on what is faith? What, what does it mean to, to have faith? So I think faith can be answered in like two ways. It could be either like, it could be objective or subjective. Um, but for me, I think faith is something either you believe in God or you don't believe in a God. And in believing in a God, I'm, I'm a Catholic. I definitely fall in line with the creed, that objective form of faith, where we believe that God came 2,000 and some years ago in the form of Jesus Christ, suffered and died for us, and is now is seeking a relationship with us constantly, every day. And our faith is that our faith is in Jesus Christ and our faith is in the church. Yeah, I would uh, tie in with that as well. Um, and I would even go to the creed, um, the Apostles Creed, as, as uh, we pray every Sunday um, and believing that we are uh, one holy and Catholic apostolic church. Um, and, um, you know, it's really dissecting that prayer as well. Um, what does the word Catholic mean? Uh, being universal. Um, and we believe that, that Christ, who, um, who, who lived for us and who died for us and who resurrected, resurrected for us, uh, was not just for, for a certain group of people, but rather for the whole entire world. Um, and believing that that is very true and that, and that, that is uh, evident between you and I. Um, and it's a very intimate, intimate form of love. Um, and I think if we really understand that, if we really have the faith and the conviction to believe um, uh, these, these truths, these, reali these realities that did happen, and that is what is faith, is to believe in these truths, um, then, then I think um, we would have the, the idea of what faith really is. No, yeah, definitely. And, and in believing in those truths and in believing in those creeds how can that be a source of comfort for, for us how can that help someone continue during these troubling times yeah definitely um in this time that we've been locked in our houses basically um i as an extrovert i've been suffering a lot just because i love being around other people i get my energy from being in crowds being in groups um, talking to people um going to shows going to mass, going to church events, seeing all these people really gives me a lot of energy and a lot of joy and excitement. And without having that constant cycle of seeing a lot of people day to day at school, going to confirmation classes, going to mass, it re has really taken a toll on me. But I think in these hard times, my faith has been getting me through it because my faith, the Catholic faith, we believe that when, that there's a community of us that are huge, that are constantly praying for each other, that we keep each other in our prayers. And I'm not alone in this struggle. There's other people beside me. There's a community of us, a huge group of people. 
constantly praying for us, praying for us to stay strong in our faith. And I think that whenever I feel a little lonely or a little bit sad that I'm by myself, I definitely turn to that faith and I turn to that belief that there is someone out there that is looking after me and praying for me and keeping having my best interests in mind. And it kind of gets me back into the reality and like calms me down a little bit. That's good. Um, my faith has been a huge thing because sometimes whenever I'm getting me stressed out or getting a little anxious, definitely prayer because that keeps me united with that group of people, those other Catholics, those who are still with us and those who have since passed that are now in heaven continuing to pray for us, that communion of saints. Yeah, that's a very interesting question um, to, to ask. And I, I really, uh, I, I want to focus on the word comfort because we live in very uncomfortable times right now. Um, we have, you know, uh, uh, you know, stores that are closing. We have, um, you know, churches that yeah. are closed. Um, you know, our favorite restaurants uh, are, are, are not providing any, are, are, have become takeout, you know? So there's this lack of, um, of, of wanting to do stuff, but we can't do it. So it becomes very uncomfortable. We know we're stuck at home. Um, but as, as people of faith and as people who are going, uh, who, who believe in something much bigger than, than what's going on here, um, there's, there, there's hope and comfort that, that takes place. Um, and that comfort is, is believing that we, we really have a God who, who also went through, uh, trials and tribu tribulations as well, who suffered, who, um, went through difficult moments and who even at times, um, uh, was unsure of what was going to happen. Um, he, I think one, one beautiful message that we could take from all of this is that he continued to believe in, in the father. He continued to believe in God, um, and believe that though hope and comfort may not seem so clear to us right now, um, as we continue to move forward and as we continue to, to try to find the good things out of each day, to continue to find, um, some of the of the small miracles that take place, um, and it becomes much more clear to us really where God is working in the midst of all the all this uncomfortableness. Um, I would say, as a college student myself, it's very difficult um, in the midst of all a lot of work and a lot of busyness um, to just focus on that and to exclude our uh, prayer life, to exclude those moments of of um, of a schedule that we had, right? Um, but I think, you know, a big thing, too, is, is to really go back to scriptures. And during this time of Holy Week um, that we're celebrating this week, uh, I think it's a great time to uh, recount the passion that Jesus went through, right? Because that was very uncomfortable, <laughs> obviously. Um, but to recount with the passion that Jesus went through and the suffering that he endured for the sake of a more comfortable life and for the sake of, of a more... Um, uh, fruitful and um, assuring life that there is hope in the midst of this darkness. No, no, yeah, definitely. And, and just to conclude with, with my last question, how, what would you say to a person? How can they believe? How can they have faith? How can they, in a sense, grow in their faith when they don't necessarily believe? What, what, what are some things that they can do to, to grow in faith? So growing in faith, I think, is something that you have to work at. Um, for example, when I was coming in my faith journey, I think a lot of times I was expecting it to be handed to me, or I was expecting just showing up to the events, showing up to mass, just showing up to those praise and worship nights that I was doing something. But I didn't see the actual change in my faith and in my spirituality until I started being an active participant in my faith. So I started making my faith my own. So constantly seeking out Jesus Christ, constantly seeing how can I become a better person? When I may ask myself those questions and acted on them, when I really tried really hard to follow the commandments, to do my sacraments and to live them out, I think that was when I had my real, my real conversion, my true coming to Jesus moment where I realized that there's a lot more to faith than just showing up to mass and just being a part of like, a big dancing circle of people or showing up to mass and just sitting there quietly. 
that there is an active part of it that we have to act in it that we can't just sit passively and let things pass us by so i think for my best advice that i would recommend to other people when they are asking how do i nurture my faith what can i do to grow in my faith and i think the prayer be an active participant realize that god wants to have a relationship with you and a relationship takes effort and it takes time it takes um people listening and it takes people talking so it definitely to have that to grow in your faith you have to grow in your relationship with god grow in your relationship with christ and a big part is grow in a community be a part of something be a part of something bigger than yourself um going to mass mass is not just a big church building that you show up and sit at for an hour a week if that church the church is a group of people that love each other and then love God and that we're learning to love other people and learning how to be better people. And that's what I think faith really is, what it comes down to. So when if you're if you're wondering how do I grow in my faith, what can I do to nurture my faith? Prayer, community, and action. Take action, take charge, and learn what are ways that you can change in your life in order to become a better person. And in becoming a better person, a better Christian. Yeah, um, I would even, um, you know, add on to that as well. Um, and I think what David was saying, it's beautiful, is to um, build a sense of community uh, within our um, our community. Um, we, uh, David mentioned church, um, and that church is with a capital C, the universal church, that um, we, we have an extended community of 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 believers who uh, are aiming for the same good. And I uh, would say that, I know as Catholics, it's very obvious for some things we could do. Um, it's been uh, made known to us that there is mass every day, um, live stream mass. Um, that's a good way to be in union with everyone else, uh, with, with our fellow Catholics. Um, and there's also, um, you know, taking part in, in rosaries. Um, if you don't know how to pray the rosary, um, you know, go on YouTube, search it up, uh, you know, try to educate yourself uh, in the midst of, of these, of these moments of that are, again, you know, un, are not really usual for us. Um, and, um, I know in confirmation class and Jordan could testify to this, that, you know, we, we really center on, on how to be active uh, in our faith. Um, and I think a very simple way is, uh, like David said, just to pray. Um, we, uh, we, we, we can't go out obviously. Um, but w- one of the beauties that we have is just to pray. Um, and prayer can be done any, anywhere. Um, and just continue to build on that, on that relationship with Jesus. You know, Chris- Christianity is not, um, just a set of rules. It's, um, it's, it's a friendship that God wants us to enter into. Um, and it's a, it's a love that um, is beyond any other love that there is. Um, so I really think that's kind of what I would say in regards to how to nurture one's faith. No, yeah, moments. definitely. And I like how both of you emphasized on, on faith that it's really a, a personal relationship that you have with, with Christ. I like how you emphasize that it's a personal relationship that you contribute to, you know? Mm-hmm. That you put yeah. effort in and that you mature and grow and the deeper you, you connect with, with Christ, you know, the deeper the relationship is. And I think, like you both mentioned, that's how you nurture or in other ways um, grow in your faith. So, no, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. One of the priests that I watched says, said something online on a, on a stream. Um, he said, one of the biggest excuses that I always get whenever I ask people, well, do you pray? They always say, oh, I don't have any time. But now that we're all locked in our houses, we yeah. have nowhere to go. There's, we've really had all of our excuses cut out for us. There's time. Yeah. Let's make that constant effort to try to grow in a little or as big as we can in our faith. So yeah, definitely, definitely. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, well, right now we have as a guest one of our confirmation students, Jordan. And I'm going to allow Jordan to ask her her question right now um, in regards to, to faith. So Jordan, go on, ask your question. Well, as Chris was saying about holding on to faith, and I think during like what's going on right now, a lot of people are kind of questioning their faith. 
so how do you hold on to your faith when everything like everything bad is going on right now yeah i think it's definitely uh, like a blow to our face whenever we feel like something is out of our control and we can't control it um and i think that's my favorite part about my faith is that when bad things happen i can put all that fear and all that anxiety and all that worry in god's hands that i don't have to deal with it by myself um i think a part of my faith is the fact that even when things are hard we turn to god i think um one of my one of the most common experiences that i see is that sometimes people only go to church when things are going bad like right now i feel like there was people that were like crying and calling the churches and they were saying, why are you guys not open? Why is nobody there? And I, I feel like for, in a sense, some people have even felt like they've been abandoned even by the church, even by the, that, that building that used to refuge them in these times. But I think in this moment, it's kind of the way that I can, that I hold on to my faith and the way people can is remembering that bad things have happened in the past, constantly, routinely. And, the sun has set and the sun has gone down every morning and God has carried us through all of that. And I think our faith has helped us remain strong in these moments. Even if at times our faith feels weak or it feels like we're questioning or doubting, God is not going to let us down or abandon us. And I think that's what constantly keeps me tying back to my faith is that I know that God has my back and that God will be there for us. While it's a little bit hard to believe that when things are bad or going on in the world, the day that this is all over, we're going to be able to look back and think, you know, he was there. He was there guiding all of, all of us through this. And sure, some bad things happened, but we can plan for a better future and a better tomorrow. The, I mean, not saying that there's a silver lining or a good thing that comes out of tragedies happening. Yeah. But there definitely is some sort of comfort knowing that we're not going through this alone. And that no matter how bad things get, we're always going to have that to lean back on. We're always going to have our faith, always going to have God to fall back on. So I think keeping, keeping that in mind that God does not want bad for us in any way constantly is a good reminder that we, we as a church are united and we're strong and that we're praying for each other and hope we can hope for together a better future. Our hope is in Christ. That's all we have right now. We can we put our trust in medicine. We put our trust in all this stuff, but, I was reading that it's going to take 18 months to find a cure it's for a vaccine. It's going to take even longer for us to find out how this is, how we're going to, going forward, prevent these kinds of pandemics in the future. But hopefully this is a segue for us for in the future to have, have a little bit more faith in God and have a little bit more faith in the way that he's constantly moving us and guiding, guiding all of us. Yeah. Um, just to briefly add on to that as well, um, I want to kind of tie into scripture a little bit. Um, we, we heard a few, a few Sundays ago on the miracle, miracle of the blind man. Um, and the apostles were asking Jesus, what, what kind of sin has the parents done in order for uh, this person to be blind? And then Jesus, uh, Jesus responds, it wasn't the sin of their parents. It was so that, uh, so, so that God could be known through this miracle. Um, so what does that mean? It means that, that, uh, in the midst of struggles and tribulations, like we mentioned before, um, sometimes God allows bad things to happen as well, um, in order to, to show, uh, his presence even more, um, and to understand that there's a greater good. Um, St. Paul writes that we know that in everything God works for good with those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. So as long as we remember to love God above all things, um, then we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. No, yeah, definitely. And I like how um, you mentioned, David and Alex, about community. Belonging to a community to, to help you understand your faith, but especially to also grow in, in your faith. And I hope that through these videos and through these opportunities that we have for, for all of you to engage in conversation, that you grow a sense of community and that, you know, we stay together and that continue to hold on to, to our faith in, in this difficult journey. Um, when I was thinking about this topic for today, one thing that came to mind was something that Mother Angelica said. 
regarding faith, hope, and love. And the things that she said about it were, faith is what gets you started. Hope is what keeps you going. Love is what brings you to the end. And so definitely throughout these videos and through the different topics that we discuss, I, I do hope that it's an opportunity for us to grow in our faith, to grow in hope that we need to hold on during these difficult times and above all to continue to love as a community. So thank you, um, Alex and David for answering Jordan's question. And thank you, Jordan, for your question, oh. which was an amazing question. Yeah, um, we're going to now move Jordan. on to our closing prayer. So if we can have Alex lead us into prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this for this day, for this a moment, just to be with you and to be able to express our thoughts and our feelings and even our concerns um, in, in this time that you have given us. So you pray for our family and friends and those that we know who are on the front lines of this of this epidemic, um, our healthcare workers, our um, law enforcement officers, our firefighters, paramedics, um, and uh, especially those who have been a, a victim of this um, this virus, that those who um, are currently in in states that are um, that they may find no hope and no purpose to life, that they may know that there is a God who loves them tremendously and who and who wills them to 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 be saints, to be holy. Um, in, in the midst of their of their struggles, and to never forget that that God is is a God of that our God is a God of compassion, that our God is a God of love, and He is um, willing to show us um, how to love um, through our own struggles and and sufferings. Um, continue to pray for those who uh, were able to be in attendance today uh, to this uh, to this video for Jordan, for David, and for Jesus. Um, that we may continue to spread God's love in everything that we do. God of strength, accompany all those who serve us with such love and generosity in this medical profession and all of our healthcare facilities. We give thanks for their continued work and their service of people. We ask you to bless them, strengthen them, and guide them with your abundant goodness. Amen. Amen. In the, Holy Spirit. in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex, for that wonderful prayer that you did. Um, well, that's all that we have for today. Um, this video is going to be on the Campus Ministry page on the MCU website. Next week, we'll have a live um, stream, hopefully, and we'll be sending out announcements um, through... MCU emails and posting links on the MCU page. So stay tuned for that. And we'll continue God willing these faith dialogues and, and conversations. So I want to thank again, um, Alex and David for helping us in and giving us their theological insight on what faith is and in, on Jordan and helping us in guiding this discussion with your question. And of course, to um, our brother seminarian JP, who is helping us, in doing these videos. So thank you. Thanks, JP. Thank you. Thank you.